Hi, once again, this is episode number 783, and the topic today is going to get messy. The <laughs> uh, topic today is Happily Ever After and Other Fairy Tales slash Horror Stories. Before I jump into that and explain what I mean and what I'm hoping going to help you with understanding some things, and maybe give us some guidance, is introduce myself first and tell you more about what I'm about before I jump into the topic. So hi, my name is Barry Selby. Nice to see you in my broadcast. I am a best-selling author, inspirational speaker, and relationship attraction expert, helping women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion of the Divine Feminine, which informs on my work, and what inspired me to do, to do these talks in the first place over two years ago, well over two years ago now, called Messages from the Masculine, Inspiring a Feminine Heart. And today we're at episode number 783. Getting up there somewhere. Um, and all the other ones are archived. I'll tell you the back end, by the way, this is my Facebook Live, and I will tell you at the back end where you can find all my replays and et cetera, et cetera. So the topic today is um, happily, ever, happily Ever After and Other Fairy Tales slash Horror Stories. I added the last part right before I went live because I realized that fairy tales wasn't enough. I need to put some scary bits in there. <laughs> so let's jump in. So first of all, this this happily ever, happily ever after is the fairy tale thing about you know they they felt they met each other, fell in love, and then lived happily ever after. It's such a fairy tale. For most people, relationships, I'd say for in fact I would mm, I'd say for almost everybody, relationships are not fairy tales. There are fairy tale romances which oftentimes end up being. Um, dysfunctional, narcissistic, or sociopathic experiences that are not fun. But the thing about living happily ever after, it's, it's only, actually let me put it this way, it is possible to live happily ever after on a few conditions. One of those conditions is that you do the work that shows up in that relationship. A lot, of people get fall, a lot of people fall in love and, and get into a relationship without any understanding about what they're getting into. They think everything's going to be fine every day, it's going to be peaceful, it's going to be easy. And when shit shows up, because it does, because that's what happens when you bring two people together in love, friction happens, stuff and, and ha happens. When that happens for people, they don't know what to do with it. A large number of divorces, I believe, and this is not, this is not verifiable evidence, I'm just saying what I believe, a large number of divorces happen because people aren't willing to do the work. Uh, there are several instances. Now, let me let me as back up. So, as soon as I said that, I had another thought drop in, which is, for many people, there is um, irreconcilable differences. But see, the thing for me is, irre irre irreconcilable—that's the right word. Differences are those things that are discovered when you can, when you've done all the work you can to get to that point. It starts off simply with the cap on the toothbrush not being left off or put on when it shouldn't be, whatever, which way it is. Or the toilet roll being the wrong way around. I mean, simple things like that can start this spiral into another place. Happily ever after requires work, simply put. And you can have happily ever after, although we saw my broadcast a few days ago on um, Sunday, I think it was. I told us about happiness being a choice you can do when you're single. So happiness, happy, living happily ever after, hang on. So I just went down my throat, it's a quick slurp. I'll tickle in my throat, I'm really sure I don't choke all over the microphone and, and blare at the speakers. Being happy for no reason first is one of the things I teach in my work and it's what I'm passionate about helping my clients do because when you get clear about who you are and what you're about, then you don't have to wait to live happily ever after, you live happily now. So that's one of the discords or the discrepancies in that fairy tale. Secondly, to live happily ever after requires, well, how do I say it another way? I believe, frankly, that if you don't deal with your own baggage, demons, issues, stuff, when you're single, then you're putting a lot of responsibility onto your partner to be okay with all the stuff you're gonna dump on them when you get into a relationship. Yesterday's talk, I believe, if I remember correctly, I'm trying to remember my, my previous days of topics, they come through and I don't always remember what they are the next day. I spoke about dealing with your demons, facing those challenges inside that maybe you haven't dealt with yet, so you can be free to love properly, the way, excuse me, free to love effectively properly in your next relationship. So again, first point is to do the work when you're in a relationship 
Second point is do the work before you get into a relationship because both things come true. Because the thing about it is, you know where you where you know where you live. You know where you <laughs> reside in yourself when you're single, when you're in your own company. And and for most people, I believe, because I don't know everybody, but I suspect most people have a reference point or relevance to knowing their lives where things are not working the way they want. And so when they get into a relationship, that stuff gets carried in. So if you deal with what's in the challenging spaces on your own, you're in a better place, that leads you to a place where you can have more what you really want. I basically don't work with couples and there's extreme circumstances. I work with singles because it's much easier, first of all. Dealing with one person's stuff is much easier than dealing with two people's stuff, as you may have guessed. Although I, my new group program is going to be probably 10 right now is the plan, 10 people together, but they're not in relationship with each other. So that's, that's why it's a bit easier. And I'll mention what that is later on. So having the understanding that you do the work when you're in a relationship to, ex to make sure you can live happily after. Secondly, do the work when you're single because it's not your partner's job to clean up your baggage and, and crap that's going on. Do the work yourself when you're single. Whether it's working with a coach like myself or some other way of doing it, make that a priority. The healthier you are in your inner relationship, the much more joyful and happily ever after you'll have in relationship when you get there. Now, part of that also means your, your, your filters and your discernment will be much clearer. Because one of, the, one of the other parts of this challenge of relationships is we fall in love with a fantasy. Again, other fairy tales, which turn out to be nightmares. As you may have said that, it said nightmares instead of horror stories. Well, I might change the title. Because nightmares and horror stories, they still have interesting languaging. Actually, yes. The title is now changing my head, and I'll change it after I sign off. Is <laughs> I'm changing on the fly. Is happily ever after and other fairy tales slash nightmares. That's probably more accurate than horror stories. Yeah, nightmares sounds better. Okay. So if you join the broadcast before I live and you're wondering what I'm talking about, now you know I'm switching it. You'll notice in the replay. Where was I going with that? So rewind, rewind, rewind. <laughs> this is fun to do these broadcasts and not not know have a script or anything to work with. So one, oh, there we go. One of the other fallacies we fall into is thinking that who we meet is who they really are. It's so interesting to watch people fall in love with somebody and within six months go, who the hell is this person I met? We hold this fantasy in our heads of what this person is going to be like, how they're going to treat us, how we can treat them, and how amazing it's going to be in a relationship. And then you discover how inaccurate that vision, that fantasy is. Part of that is because we don't have on um, realistic expectations of our own participation in a relationship. And for most people, especially with the current um, plethora, is a good word, plethora of smartphone dating apps that make dating sites so are old school now. With all those choices, it's easy to get fooled by the delusion of what you're looking at. And I'm saying delusion, not illusion. So again, working on yourself first is a priority because one, you have a better, a better recognition of who you are. Secondly, you raise your standards, which includes having better discernment to know when you meet somebody within the first few minutes, we can tell pretty quickly that's not gonna work or this can work or this might work. You'll have, a, you'll have an awareness of a, of a spectrum, so to speak, of range of what does and doesn't work. But it does require you owning and discerning your own filters and your own um, Detecting detective work or detectors, something like that. I'm going to find the right word for it. These, if you, this is how my my talks happen, oftentimes they're spontaneous. Sometimes these come through out of sequence, so I have to back up and re-edit, like I did the title of this talk. Um, I appreciate you bearing with me because <laughs> this is sometimes the challenge of doing these talks without scripts and without um, plans, because this is only based on the title. Anyway, continuing on with what I know is coming through. The nightmare part is that a lot of times we get shocked by who we meet in relationship. And having dealt with several clients who've gone through challenges with narcissistic partners, and even in one case a socio sociopathic partner, I'm very clear how painful and how nightmarish the experience can be in a relationship where you feel you can't get out. And I don't have an easy answer to say that you just get out, walk away, and it's done, because it doesn't always work that way with stalkers and, and um, um, restraining orders, stuff like that, it gets pretty serious. So I work with, your, with you when you're single so you can really get clear on your discernment so you basically don't get fooled again. It's quite another song. It takes the willingness, it takes the commitment 
it takes the trust in your own self to grow into the place where you choose relationships from a healthier, holistic, health and honest place so you don't get fooled again. It really is about one, having a reality check to know what is in front of you, what you're looking at, what you're experiencing, what you're about. Two, is having a realistic understanding of who you really are and maybe what wounds you're carrying around from the past, what pain, what traumas, what challenges you've had from past relationships that you haven't actually had a chance to deal with and work through. That um, honest reflection of yourself, that look in the mirror that you may want to take, will give you some clues as to what you need to do next. The dating relating experience, the idea of being in a relationship, is not the place you go to fix everything. And it's not your partner's job to fix you either. That's, that's another delusional fantasy that's out there. That relationship, in my world, because it may not be in yours, but it's in my world, is a place to raise and grow and become a better person, but already be doing it yourself when you're single, because why wait for the relationship? Being single is one of the best places, the most opportune times to focus on who you are and what you're about. A lot of people I'm aware of, and again I'm using that term a lot of people because I'm using a generalistic label, because not everybody, but generally speaking, most people I believe, I'm just watching the language I'm using here, okay, that I believe, most people are actually caught up in a paradigm where they do nothing between relationships. They don't change anything about themselves, they just go on, they may, go, they may change their appearance for a new date but they don't do the inner work to change their own perception of the world. They wait to their own relationship for that. And my suggestion is you got that backwards. The real journey to discover who you are, the real journey to become a better person has to happen with it when you're on your own. Here's another part of it, by the way. And this is actually in my book. Um, and I'll put a link to that in the comments as well. In the book, I talk about rubber band relationships. Chat, um, that's one of the early chapters, like six or seven, I think. There's 50 chapters, I forget which one's which. But I mentioned in the book this thing called rubber band relationships. And the idea being is that when we change and grow, we put tension on our relationships because not it isn't the case where both partners always grow at the same time, same direction, at the same speed. That can be challenging in relationships. And it can be happening through intentional growth, development, maybe you're taking a new, a new yoga practice or meditation or doing some seminars and changing your life or finding a new career. Or it could be something traumatic based where it was an injury or an accident or something happened that was traumatic to the relationship. Maybe there was cheating involved. These events or these experiences will change the frequency or the level each partner is, is expressing at, so to speak. So the rubber band is the tension in the relationship between the two partners. And when you put tension that's greater on the relationship, as in more trauma or more change, more development, more difference between the two partners, at some point, one of three things will happen. One of those things is that the person who didn't change because for whatever reason, looks at the other partner and sees how much they've become better, healthier, brighter, more holistic perhaps, and decides they want to change to match that. Or in the case of trauma, where one of them is suffering more, the other person jumps in and says, you know, I need to be with you. I need to hold the space to help you heal and grow, whichever way that works. That's one of the things that can happen. The second thing is the person who's changed who's grown, decides their relationship partner is more important than their growth, which is rare, but it happens. And they'll back down and they'll turn, they'll, they'll sort of fake the ignorance to go back to where they were, so to speak. And that sounds pretty nasty, but that's what I mean by that. When it comes to trauma, it's a different experience because that's a done deal, that something's happened that's changed the relationship. So there, that doesn't have a reversible, um, there's no reverse gear on that. It has to be feel, uh, dealt with and resolved. The third thing, especially with the trauma that happens, is that rubber band breaks and the person, the people separate. In the first two instances I mentioned, by the way, by the person who was behind catching up, the person who's ahead stepping back down, the tension on, relation, tension on the rubber band is lessened so the relationship can survive. I'm saying this to say that if you are single, excuse me, if you're in a relationship and you suddenly decide you want to start growing, taking workshops, seminars, reading books, taking up new practices, you're taking a gamble your partner doesn't want to go with you. Now, ideally, you say, oh, I'm going to be in a perfect relationship my partner will grow just as, just as fast as I do. You can't prove that or detail that ahead of time. It might happen, but no promises. So my recommendation is when you're single is the best time to do the work 
that makes you a better person, a more healthy person, a more transparent, vulnerable, caring, compassionate, all these different things. So when you're in a relationship, you're already there. And so the relationship with your partner, first of all, you'll attract a partner that matches you more easily. And basically because you already are on the growth path, the partner you meet may well be on the same path as well, in which case that growth happens easily, organically, and naturally. I'm sorry if I want to leave you anything else. I think that's gonna that I think that's gonna I think it's gonna give you what you need. Because my point about this is very simple. Is that being single is a valuable place to be. Because this is one of the things that people deal with. Again, the fairy tales is that you won't be complete, you won't be whole until you're in a relationship. And that's utter bullshit. Absolute crap. Being single, especially nowadays, is a very healthy, clear, and frankly, fulfilling place to be. If you don't know that, you don't believe that, let's talk, I can help you with that. Because being single is a good place to do your own self-development, your own growth, and your own self-support. Because a lot of people go into a relationship looking for the other person to support them. This is another one of these pieces of the puzzle. They figure that for some women, they'll wait till their night shining armor shows up to take them away from all this hell and, and crap so they can have a great life. Or a man's gonna go find a woman who's gonna take care of him so he can go out and do the things in the world. Maybe, maybe not. Be your own hero. Do your own work and become the best person you can be. I'm gonna leave some offerings in the comments, some links that, I'll talk about, that I've talked about already and a couple other things as well. You can check out for yourself to see if you wanna do them. They might help you, no, they won't. They will help you become the better person you want to be. My focus, my work, my service is to help you become a much more powerful, loving, and fulfilled person so you can be in a much better relationship. If that interests you, check out the links in the comments. Quick recap, this is my daily Facebook Live. It's funny, my screen went really dark for a second there. Guess I'm okay. Um, this is my daily Facebook Live that I do every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page on Facebook, which is uh, Barry Selby. So you can find me there every day at 5 p.m. The replays, which you want to check out, you haven't seen my broadcast before, are on my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author. And you can like my page if you like and watch my broadcast there. And or you can go to my business page, sorry, my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby. Please like my YouTube channel. And on there is a playlist called Messages for the Masculine, which you can sort through and find all my broadcasts over the last two plus years to peruse, view, and learn from. Again, I'll put some links in the comments to keep you busy that will give you some ideas for what you can do to work with me and what you can do to work for yourself and transform your life accordingly. And as always, I invite your comments and questions or thoughts below. I respond when I sign off because when I'm interacted here. And I invite you to take care of yourself. This, my talks are always about helping you take better care of yourself. And my encouragement every time I do these talks is to say, please take care of yourself. With that, I thank you for watching. I appreciate you being with me. I will be back in tomorrow, same time, same channel. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon. Bye.